Hello, I'm Dan Bowles, and this is the concluding lecture in a series to teach the principles of our existence as presented in my book, Are We Just Bubbles? An Alternate View of Existence. Here are some key elements of an expanding space bubble universe. Our entire universe consists of space bubbles. All the bubbles have the same properties, even though each bubble is unique in that it cannot share its space with another. Each bubble consists only of its space material that is forcefully trying to expand its bubble against neighboring bubbles. These bubbles are like the sought-after Higgs bosons, or God particles as Leon Letterman called them. But unlike the Higgs bosons that supposedly invisibly zip around empty space at the speed of light, the space bubbles are stationary and expanding at the speed of light. Space bubbles form the fabric of space. This fabric is the proposed Higgs field that cosmologists talk about. The bubble expansion within the fabric is continuously creating absolute energy, or it's more like a dark energy of existence that we cannot see. Matter comes out of the invisible expanding vacuum space when the space bubbles become clumped to a density greater than the surrounding vacuum space bubbles. This clumping gives them the property of mass, which is proportional to their density. When the clumps break up and the bubbles expand back to the vacuum space bubble size, they lose their mass, become invisible again, and give up visible energy. This is what the scientists call the Higgs effect, and is also the cause of the E equals mc squared behavior of matter. Packets of stored energy, like photons, are actually just expansion ripples in the space fabric and travel through the medium at the speed of expansion which defines the speed of light. There are no voids between the bubbles, so they must share sides at all times. The boundaries of the bubbles are formed at the interface where bubbles meet and the bubble material cannot mix. Since the expansive force within each bubble is equal, the bubbles can figure in flat-sided geometric shapes. The sides of the bubbles must perfectly match with the sides of other bubbles. In vacuum space, the vacuum space bubbles form a uniform cubical matrix, and all of the cubes are expanding at what defines the speed of light. Clump groups of bubbles that form matter may have all kinds of flat-sided shapes that are locked into configurations imposed by the matching side requirement. Each bubble in the clumped configuration expands slower than the vacuum space bubbles, resulting in the whole clump expanding in proportion to the vacuum space. The clumps of bubbles are denser than vacuum space and the mass of the clump relates directly to its density. Vacuum space bubbles in different regions of the universe might have different expansion rates, especially those that would be close to the universe boundary with the void. All actions of the universe are the result of the invisible space bubble expansion. Our awareness of universe existence comes solely from the visibility of these actions, even though we cannot see the space bubbles themselves or see them expand. Time passage is a result of linear expansion of these bubbles in absolute length units. Space bubbles can only expand or slow down in expansion, but can never stop or contract. Therefore, time always moves forward and never stops or moves backward. Universe distance measurements 
are just a comparison of an expanding space bubble reference to another set of bubbles being measured. Invisible energy or dark energy or the energy of existence as you want to call it is just the volume expansion of space bubbles into an empty, in, infinite void of non-universe space. There was no Big Bang in which all of the energy of the universe was created at its beginning. Energy is not conserved in the traditional sense as now believed with that theory. Instead, the universe is continuing to be created through creative expansion from with all, within all of the space bubbles. All forces of action on objects at a distance, such as gravity, inertia, or electromagnetic forces come from an imbalance in the vacuum space pressure, which is ultimately caused by the bubble expansion. Vacuum space pressure can vary in different parts of the universe. Finally, and as a, as a summation, all physical existence comes from a continuing creative expansion from within each bubble that makes up the universe. A big fizz, if you will. The new space material within each bubble comes from an unknown source outside of our universe. And there may only be a certain amount of it. Since the universe had a beginning, it might be logical to think it might have an end. If the source of our universe material runs dry, then nothing of our universe will exist. There will be no time nor even a record that the universe ever existed. I was inspired to write my book upon awakening from a dream vision that I had one night. With my limited knowledge of physics and mathematics, I have tried to understand how this bubble foam causes the universe to exist. And I have tried to make this believable for you with some very basic concepts of how it might work scientifically. I humbly offer these concepts and I do not offer any proofs. To those of you with an open mind, these revelations should ignite an intense fire in you to explore the possibilities of completely understanding how Mother Nature works. The work done previously by scientists recording physical behavior and creating mathematical formulas to describe the behavior is still valid. It is to us as we observe it. But now we might be able to see that it is happening in a different way than we thought. And we might start to see why it happens this way. Listen and hear, you brilliant-minded physicists, mathematicians, cosmologists, and engineers. Those who might be bored out of your minds and think that everything there is to know is practically known, as Lord Kelvin once said, here is some meaningful and exciting work for you to do. Humbly take the knowledge that those before you have gained. Open your eyes wider now with this new vision and use it to come to a more complete understanding of what we are physically and how we exist in the universe. But do not succumb to arrogance and selfish pride. Remember that we might never know how it was that our consciousness, spirit, and soul got here or what is to become of us. There just might be a God that is blowing the bubbles of our existence. And for all of you prophets, spiritual philosophers, teachers, and reflect reflectors of the Creator's love, if you are courageous enough to peek behind your religious veil, you might discover that you were right all along to think that God is love, and that God is in all of creation. It's just that you were nearsighted and could only see a small part of the truth to think that we are the center of the universe in a spiritual sense. 
For if God is breathing life into our universe for every second that passes, and is the essence and source of our consciousness and soul, we need to be humble and grateful for our existence. It is our arrogance and narrow-mindedness that is causing hell here on our tiny earth. We have to admit that we are not here by our own doing and that knowledge of the universe workings has no bearing on its existence. When we open our eyes to this, we will see that the scientific, religious, and metaphysic, metaphysical philosophers have been like the three blind mice trying to describe an elephant based upon the small part they are in touch with. We are all part of this glorious creation, not the cause, and we must peacefully coexist with all of it. We will just have to trust and have faith that our Creator will guide us into the light. This concludes my lectures on my little book about the great big universe. I hope some of you have gotten some good out of them. Thank you for listening.